Henry Christian Hopman. What a story you could write on the blazing strings of law that keep our tennis world alight. As green grenades are rocket launched in modern wars of juice to hail your contribution, well, it seems the best excuse to be winding back the clock of time and making good report on that kid from Rose Hill Primary School, obsessed with summer sport. But to serve this acclamation down and trust that it will carry, no word of law be spoken more without addressing Harry. Tell me this, young Harry, what possessed your sprightly eyes from cricket fields and tennis courts at Parramatta High? You focused all your future in the patriotic packet of a journey that was moulded through the magic of a racket. Did your father's principality provide some sort of feeder in evoking your credentials as a statesman and a leader. But before that epic chapter in the fabric of this tale, to light the way, your state of play is worthy of regale. As Farlap galloped grandly through the contours of our heart and Bradman with his blade of brilliance tore the palms apart, a name emerged across the courts and Harry it was you, rising to the rank of six in 1932. Three Australian Open finals, rack them up, no troubles. Even more accomplished when the action turned to doubles. But destiny lay waiting as retirement approached. Your greatest deed would be decreed through players that you coached. Dream your dream. Select your team. It's time to fire up. You do it for your country when you play the Davis Cup. Tell me, Harry Hopman, did an anxious moment pass when those post-war confrontations saw the US kick our ass? Did it stir the blood within your veins and propagate a flame? When lent an opportunity to Reignite the game. Tennis in this southern land was stealing to unite as hardened spines drew battle lines and rallied forth to fight. It was a nation raised on raw bone talent. First a double pegger, the platform of potential built on Sedgman and McGregor. From junior tennis avenues, you put them on the road. And then a new phenomenon. The champion, Lou Hode. The gun from Glebe exploded, and beside him in those tussles, a wrecking ball called Rosewall flexed his title-winning muscles. Tell me, Mr. Hopman, could you hear Australia roar as through the storm a regime formed like never seen before? Well, they were hard, but they were humble. They were fit, and they were strong. Ashley Cooper's conquest was the next to come along. Fraser followed fiercely, never bolder, never braver. And then the lightning lefty, the immortal rocket laver. Anderson and Emerson, the Ando Emo show. Stolly fueled the folly as he kept our reign aglow. Tell me. From that sideline chair, inspired by the thrill, his victim pinned, the old fox grinned, admiring the kill. The old fox, yes, you loved it. Harry, tell me how you fared when your best troops turned professional and younger blood was bared. Although you gave the pros a bake, cold shouldering their quest for another wave of weaponry, our arsenal was blessed. It was something in your formula. I mean, it can't have been a fluke. As Rochi wrote his masterpiece in partnership with Nuke, and when the dust had settled, well, folks, the fact could not be clearer. In history's frame, this page would name and claim the Hopman era, the godfather of Davis Cup, a man of many missions, 15 out of 17 triumphant expeditions. Tell me, Captain Hopman, 
through the glory of your glasses in the midst of forehand thunderbolts and backhand cross-court passes. Serve and volley venom weaving winners through the fable with painful punctuality and manners at the table. Did your dynasty of discipline, both on and off the court, remind the team that no one dream was bigger than the sport? Yes, beers were few and girls were too. But trophies line the trenches and memories make victories the source of great adventures. They're resonating stronger with the luxury of time. Teamwork, marked by mateship, that's what makes these verses rhyme. That mighty fold of green and gold did dominate the planet, which casts a grand reflection on the patriarch who ran it. Tell me, Harry Hopman, sitting up there on that cloud, does something start to warm your heart and make the old fox proud? Does something lend a shiver? Was a special spirit sworn in the dawning of that moment when the Hopman Cup was born? To fortify your legacy and give the game great worth. To hold it in the perfect place, the friendly city, Perth. To welcome in the tennis year with fireworks so fine, a smorgasbord of talent to the tune of Old Lang Syne, with men and women teaming, pit the best against the best, to persevere, to stand and cheer, to win the wild, wild west, to raise their rackets once again. The world needs no persuasion to celebrate this showcase for the 25th occasion. The court doth reign with shooting stars from all across the globe. As Djokovic, Ivanovic electrify the probe with Venus, Verdadasco, Moshe Songa, Tommy Haas. As Tomic Barty join the party, keen to show their class. This field is international. The atmosphere of fizz, Henry Christian Hopman. What a tournament this is. Tell me, Harry Hopman, when it's game, set, match tonight, and the blazing strings of law have kept our tennis world alight. As Lucy flies the flag to keep your name a constant force, and the linesmen and the ball boys have been duly thanked, of course. In a wonderful new stadium where greatness vows to spill, will another chapter beckon, mate? You bet your life it will, because the 24 that got us here have been a blast, old chum. But what lights up your Hopman Cup? Yes, the best is yet to come. Ladies and gentlemen, here's to another 25 years of the Hopman Cup and beyond. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the Poet Laureate of Australian Sport, Mr Rupert McCall.